Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name is David Corson. and I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. That's what it looks like. There it is. Yeah, Mammoth Holdings, JLL, Tim Holden, all my covers. Anyway, thanks for finding us on the web and on, uh, on the uh, podcasting platforms out there on the internet. Uh, anyway, uh, it's Friday, weekend ahead. Uh, I got my colors on. Uh, big, big night last night in Boston. Oh my God. Uh, you know, I was, I was doing another podcast and I missed the first period University of Denver Pioneers ice hockey team playing number one, Michigan Wolverines went over time. The boys got it done and they won the game. Oh gosh. Tomorrow night for the championship for D one ice hockey versus the Minnesota state. Another awesome team. It's going to be unbelievable in Beantown. And uh, I know all my Pioneer guys uh, that uh, flew up for the game. Um, uh, they're just ecstatic and uh, they're getting all their posters and stuff. I've seen stuff on social media of all the stuff they're going to do. So, you know, way to go, Pios. And, uh, you know, just uh, very exciting. You know, we've been, listen, we're, we're known as a hockey power, but we're also, you know, listen, we don't, we don't have a football team. So we've got all the other sports and, uh, you know, but hockey's our big gig. And uh, so it would be nice to bring the trophy home again. See, I, this is the last time, well, this is my lacrosse one. This is the only time we won the national championship in lacrosse. The lacrosse team's playing Villanova, another uh, ranked 20 team, and it's a league play. So everybody's jockeying, got to get the wins because the tournament comes up and then you got the, uh, the national tournament, the NMA over Memorial Day weekend. So a lot of stuff going on, but Go piles. Let's, let's get it done. Let's bring that trophy home. I know it's a real nice spot next to all the other eight national trophies that we have in ice hockey waiting for that ninth one to come in. So uh, it will be great. Today, we actually have our guest is from being town. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the game, you know, and, and uh, you know, hockey and the national championship uh, in town, bringing in lots of tax revenue for the city and, uh, you know, coming out of COVID and the lockdown, you know, it's just probably really good to see people. So today, uh, our, our guest name is Leslie Cario, correct? Cario, excuse me. And yes. uh, she's with Depole Mosaic. She's the president. And she's also the president of the National Trazo Mosaic Association as well. So Leslie, say hello to our listeners out there on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Hey, it's great to be with you today. How's everybody doing? Hey, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's Friday. Uh, you got yeah. the weekend ahead. And, uh, the you sun know, is out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've had we've had some uh, really, really nasty weather over the last couple of days. Uh, a lot of rain, a lot of thunderstorms. And, uh, you know, in April in, in Atlanta, the pollen comes out. So I'm, I'm wiping off the green. I'm surprised I'm not, uh, you know, covered with it. But it was great to have the rain come in because it got rid of a lot of the pollen. But it, it's it'll be with us for another you know three weeks to a month and then May it's done. Uh, well, so, well I think the sun of here is a good omen for your uh, Denver fans, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll look so, out for them. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, you know, I, I, we'll take the water. I live right below the lake, so we need the water during the summer because we let so much of it out, and uh, you know, we want the lake the lake full filled to the brim. So we'll take that you know rain. We just don't want any uh, tornadoes or any of the other stuff going on. So whenever the sirens go off, I take cover. So that's uh, yeah, I'm a Yankee living in the South, but believe me, when the sirens go off, you take cover. You get underneath whatever you can. Um, Leave it. Um, but so, Leslie, this is the way it works. Uh, you, you, you tell us your story, you know, where you grew up, any brothers and sisters, where you went to school and, you know, how you ended up in, you know, the mosaic, uh, you know, sector. Uh, and then we'll talk a little about, uh, you know, lessons learned in the, you know, coming out of uh, the last couple of years. And, sure. uh, and then we'll close up. So the floor is yours. Tell us your story. Well, thank you. So um, I am born and raised here in Massachusetts. I will try hard not to. You don't have, not, you don't have too much of a sweat. You know, not to have an accent, here. right? Yeah, I'm from Philly. I, people go, you're not, you're not from Boston. You're not from New Jersey. You're not from, where, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Philly. You know, yep. I'm outside from Philly. There so you, but you really don't have the, you know, a Boston, you know? No, no, that's right. I, I, I try, I try to, you know, try to say all the letters. So we're, we'll see if I can keep it up this whole time. Sure. <laughs> uh, but um, so I have one sister. She's younger than I am. Um, she's married with two kids and lives outside Indianapolis. Um, 
I was, um, I was absolutely um, never going to go into our family business. My parent, my father and my grandfather growing up were in the terrazzo business. I wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing was less appealing than the idea that I would sit every day in the same room and work with my father. You know, you, you may appreciate that having probably had a father and he, and that was fine. You know, it, it was, uh, you know, it was really not expected as a daughter that I would go into the, you know, the family's commercial flooring business. Uh, so I was going to be a teacher. I went to Leslie college in Cambridge, which is now Leslie university. And mm -hmm. I actually am certified, uh, middle school English teacher. So I, um, I taught eighth grade English for a little while. Um, I did some corporate training. And uh, one day in uh, 1998, I was working probably 80 hours a week on average. And my father said, you know, you should really come work for me. We go home at 4.30 every day. Yeah. And I, I guess I was really tired that day <laughs> because I oh, said, man. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm in. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't regret it one bit. Um, you know, the, um, uh, the terrazzo business, um, terrazzo is the only finish that is manufactured right on the job site. So it, uh, we show up with bags and buckets and it actually takes shape right in front of you. Um, you know, we can do a lot of really artistic things. You know, you find terrazzo in, you know, airports, train stations, hospitals, colleges, public schools, restaurants, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, there may be designs, you know, we've done some, some um, projects in airports with, you know, fish and whales and lobsters and everything, oh, yeah. our Northeast connections here. And, uh, you know, and I think that the thing that, you know, the thing that gets still gets me excited is being able to make something that's really enduring and beautiful. Um, so when you, so when you started with your father, did you start at the bottom and, uh, you know, or, you know, like I, I, my family, one side was on upholstery furniture, the other was in construction. So I grew up in, I, I, and I walked away from all the family businesses, believe me, I did, you know, and, uh, but then I actually came back. I, I did, you know, my, you know, I did uh, actually my, my, my dad had passed away. My mom got married. So that my dad was, a, my stepdad's a retailer in jewelry. So I, I did the construction. I had to work in the steel yard when I was growing up and I got my driver's license. I did my retail training at Levitt's Furniture. I scotch guarded and did all that stuff. And then when time for me to, to move to uh, High Point, North Carolina in the mid eighties uh, during the, the last recession, uh, sofas were the last thing that people were thinking about buying. I'm like, you know what? And they had like one restaurant and I told them, I was like, I don't think furniture is in my bag. You know, so I went and you know, did my other gig. And then my mom got remarried and my stepdad was in, in a jewelry retailer. I got GI area certified. I built a couple stores and then, but I didn't like sitting behind the showcases waiting for people to come into the store. I thought it was really boring, you know, nothing against you retailers out there, but for me. And uh, so I went and did my other thing, but now I'm in construction. It's kind of like, it's gone full circle. And uh, you know, I, so I've taken all those little bits and pieces, but you know, it's funny you said about, you know, the, the you know, when I grew up, the grandsons were the only ones who were going to go into the business. The females, you know, it, it, you know, this, my sister, they, it, it wasn't even considered. No, you're not going to business. You're not going to do that stuff today. You know, half my circulation is, is female. So, you know, it's, it's a different kind of vibe. So I can imagine, you know, when you became a teacher that, you know, but all of a sudden dad said on that, you know, that one day when you're at your 80, 80th hour, Hey, how about coming in? We get out for 30. I'm in, you know? Yeah. So. Yep. Um, I, I have done <clears throat> pretty much every job in the office that there is at some point. Um, certainly, you know, I definitely, um, you know, spent time in the field. Uh, we had a field super who worked for us for over 50 years. I, you know, spent a lot of time with him visiting jobs, you know, learning the ropes. So yes, I, I certainly uh, put my put my time in on the way up. And, um, and I think, um, I think even in 1998, it was untraditional to have your daughter come in. Um, you know, but I, I guess I, uh, I benefited from the fact that my father was pretty open minded. 
Uh, he was an only child. So he had no other siblings in the business and he had only daughters. So, <laughs> you know, you take what you can get sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you take what you can get sometimes. So, um, and he and I are a lot alike. Um, you know, he, uh, he is a very smart guy and, and uh, you know, I've, I've had the benefit of, of uh, learning from him. He uh, retired to Florida in 2009 and you know continues to be involved part-time from florida uh but so how, how old is your company uh how old is your company 132 years yeah that is unbelievable you know yep. but my yeah. family's company 1888 you know we've that's been awesome business, you know that's so awesome yeah I, 1890 yeah so i tell people you know look you get a 25 year anniversary or 50 i get all these press releases you know we made our 50 you, know, you get over 75 100 years your company's still in business I mean, that's just, you can't, can't duplicate that. There are not many firms that can say that. So congratulations on that. Thank you so, so much. So your father, what was he, third generation when he took the company over or? No, no, he was actually second. So it was three generations of another family. My grandfather worked for them and eventually bought them out. And then it was, so now I'm the third generation in, in my oh, family. Nice. That, that, yeah. and, and, you know, speaking of longevity, uh, we should uh, mention in this conversation, the National Terrazzo and Mosaic Association turns 100 next year, 2023. So um, we are one of the, uh, the oldest members, the oldest continuing members of the organization have been in 75 plus years. So, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be great to celebrate that next well, year. You know, uh, the NTMA, they, they were an advertiser of mine in the magazine. So every month I always uh, ask them, you know, a marketing contact there. Hey, Sharon, which ad do you want me to run? And, you know, I've got a bunch of them up file and there's always, they're always of a different project. So she's like, let me, let me see, you know, and every one that she sends is so cool. I mean, the products, I mean, no, the photography is great, but it's really the product. And, uh, right. you know, for those of you who haven't seen Mosaic, it, it, it's awesome. You can Google it and see how it's done, but if you ever see it done in person, just like she said, on the bags they mold it you know and they they build it right there on the spot and when it's finished it's beautiful it's durable it's sustainable it's architectural it's got all those aspects and uh you know if you haven't thought about you know doing a project with it in there you know it, the the you know the opportunities and the things that you can do with it are endless you know you just have to kind of you know have that mindset and you know that vision of what you could use it for so uh but uh, hey, longevity, hundred years, go on the family business, man. That what a what a terrific story, you know. It's like uh, I just lived my youth, you know, right over. You know? <laughs> you know? It, uh, yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny when I was at Levitt's, I put more of those little brass little tables. They called them lost leaders. You know, we used to stick them all the way in the back because we used to have to make everybody walk through the whole store to get to them. You know, but you know, uh, oh yeah. I just, you know, when I look back at the, you know, the things that I did and, uh, uh, it, you know, it was, a, it, you know, I, and I wouldn't have done anything different. I, it, it was, it molded me who I was. So, sure. um, uh, but so congratulations on NTMA hundred years. Wow. You know, 1890, that that's awesome. And, uh, you know, uh, shoot, I'm coming up on 20 something myself, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> around that long is really really special so that's something to be very proud of so thanks so much so you've got this cool product and i'm sure in february of 2020 you know you were booming like everybody else and all of a sudden march comes and uh you know the whole world's turned upside down everything gets shut down oh it's going to be at three or four weeks now we're 24 months later pretty much everybody's opened up we're getting rid of masks, I think, in a week off the airplanes, April 18th. So that's nice. And, um, you know, uh, you know, there, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel or it's already here. So looking back over the last couple of years from, you know, the shutdown, the roller coaster and, you know, talk about how your how your company weathered it. And, you know, maybe some of the lessons that, you, you know, that you learned that some of our listeners out there in commercial construction coffee talk would you know, would find, you know, interesting, maybe that they might even, you know, apply to their own firms? Uh, <clears throat> I, I, well, it was, um, I, it was, 
it was a struggle, I think, for a lot of people to admit that there was this thing that was just beyond our control. Um, you know, and so you find a whole new level of flexibility, adaptability. Um, Depali Mosaic works in six different states in New England and um, every single one, every single day had different rules. Uh, so sometimes, you know, we were shut down in Connecticut, but we could work in Massachusetts or this job in New Hampshire is considered essential, so it's going. So it was just constantly, you know, okay, what is it today? And every day the rules changed. Uh, so we really struggled with the lack of kind of central direction uh, at times. Um, um, but, you know, what came out of it? Well, I have, you know, I think technology, construction has lagged behind other industries in adapting, you know, and to the use of technology, right? If you're gonna have a project meeting, you're not gonna have a conference call, you're not gonna have a Zoom meeting, you're gonna go to the job site, mm -hmm. you know, go in the trailer and everyone's gonna sit around a table and have a meeting. And, you know, that's just always how it was. And so I think that has been a good thing is that we can, you know, there are more apps, there's more, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams, more sharing of project information. Uh, you know, we save a ton of time not driving to job sites um, to go to, you know, status meetings that, you yeah, know. Yeah, half hour, you know. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I mean, Boston is a major metropolitan area with traffic, you know, and, and yes, traffic was down during the pandemic, but, you know, if you save yourself an hour to an hour and a half of driving, you can be a lot more productive, right? And I, I think people kind of figured that out. Um, I, I don't feel like construction, um, I don't feel like construction suffered from, um, suffered from so many people working at home as in other kind of professional trades, you know, where you, um, you know, with architects, you know, we're all working out of their houses. We were running around and mailing samples and meeting people in parking lots, right? But, but everybody, you know, at our company and, you know, at most construction companies that we seem to run into, you know, after that initial couple of weeks was going into the office at least part of the time. Right. Uh, you know, and I, I think, um, I think that um, at, at least for us, being able to take advantage of a the PPP loan and not lay any people off at all um, during that you know during that time, I think has has been a win for us. Um, we we you know everybody needs more labor, everybody needs people, but I don't feel like um, Depali is as affected because we didn't lose anybody. Right, we have the same size crew that we had at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so, so that I, I think worked out really well for us. Um, and, you know, I, I guess we were talking about longevity. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that always gives me confidence going into unknown situations or economic downturns is that we will survive this just like we survived all the other ones, right? Mm -hmm. War, depression, recession, you know, we, we are still here. So we will, you know, we will persevere, um, you know. Yeah, you know, it, it, your crew is, is specialized. You know, it's not yes. like someone could come in and learn, you know, terrazzo, how to lay it, you know. You know, well, they can. Just, We'd love them to, but it takes yeah. a few years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. So the guy, yeah. that your crew that, that you have was probably, you know, mainstay. You know, a lot yeah. of construction companies, you know, they're looking for PMs or they're looking for superintendents, you know, you know, people that are oversight, but they may not be as specialized as they are in the Terrazzo side of things. So that yeah. was probably a benefit. Uh, you know, and like you said, you know, like I'm down here in Georgia, so we kind of remained open. Uh, you know, but I used to talk to contractors, architects up in the, up in the Northeast or, you know, out in California, wherever the, the regulations were tighter, even in like Pennsylvania, yeah. you know, yeah. if you were doing a job out, you know, a federal, you know, highway job where you're outside, 
it was okay. But if you were doing a plumbing job inside where you had to be close, that job wasn't going to happen. And uh, right. so, you know, with you, just like you said, that every day things would change because in Tarazi, they're going to be close, close to each other, you know, depending yes. on the size of the, you know, of the install. But, yes. you know, that was, that was the biggest thing. You know, what's my liability going to be on the site? You know, how am I going to protect my people? You know, do I know what these regulations are going to be? Um, you know, the PPP helped a lot of companies, you know, at, you know, you know, was the rollout good? In my opinion, no, it was very, 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 uh, a, a bumpy road trying yes. to figure it out, you know, right. I mean, as a little guy, you know, if you were a big, all the big guys got the money first, you know, and then the little guys, yeah. you know, yeah. so, but you know, they, they, they got together and, uh, but that was the biggest thing was that, you know, people didn't know, and then it kept on going on. And then a lot of companies, you know, they were, they were market central, whether they were doing healthcare or, or whatever it might have been. But I think what's happened is just like today, we're having this conversation. Like when I, before COVID, I was going to do these interviews on construction sites. Just he said, just like you said, you would do the means. I was going to go out with my mic and do the interview on here and travel and do this stuff. You know, now I do it here. <laughs> I tell the story all the time about, oh, I don't know. I had a project management guy on my, uh, on my show. And he said in one day, he was in Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, South America, you know, Canada, uh, you know, did a couple walkthroughs in, you know, all in one day. He said, you know, without before COVID, that would have taken me like two or three weeks. Today with technology and Zoom, I get it all done in one day. That's know? right. And I don't have to burn gas. I don't have to deal with traffic. I can get all that stuff done. And I always tell people, I'm like, look, if you're going to go see someone, go see them on a construction site. Don't, you know, don't go to a show, you know, nothing against the shows or anything, because I have one too. But literally, you know, that, you know, you got to pick and choose where you're going to, where you're going to do these things. So technology, they, listen, construction rules are not going to change. You know, you're always going to, you know, are robots going to do the drywall and knock that thing? Are, are robots going to do the install on, on Terrazzo? I don't know. No, Maybe, probably not. not. You know, probably <laughs> not. You know, but you know, construction is kind of a different thing because it's a it's a manual it's a manual gig. Now, yes, you know, w technology though has embraced a lot of things, and um, one of the biggest thing was you know like company culture, like your company kind of stayed together, so you didn't lose that. A lot of companies were thinking, oh my god, what am I going to do? Do I'm I going to trust my people working in, in in their house? Are they going to get things done? And what they found out, a lot of companies is that they were more productive, they had a happier life, they got to see their kids. Uh, you didn't have to go through the, you know, the hustle and bustle going through the mass turnpike every day or, you know, wherever right. you might have been. And I mean, listen, like I said, we were talking earlier, you know, I'm very familiar with, with Beantown and down here in Atlanta. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just traffic is, you know, just we're the LA of the South. It's, it's brutal. So, uh, you know, getting rid of all of that and keeping your, your employees happy. And now as we're coming out, now the question is, how do I get my people back into the office? Or, or do I even want them back in the office? Maybe we do a hybrid. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, do I need all this office space? Uh, you know, and those are the, these are the questions that have, you know, but this technology thing, Zoom's not going away. I mean, this is here. No, no, I think it's permanently changed. It, yeah. It's totally here, you know, and there's nothing like that interpersonal in-person thing. So, I mean, I was a, I was a print face-to-face -face guy. So when, when, when the, when the bug hit the shore and everything got shut down, I just had my 10th anniversary show. I just did my first cocktail party. We did one, one a month around the country. And, um, and then I was kind of frozen. I, you know, I hate using the word pivot because that's what the big word was, but I pivoted. So I went from print face to face to digital overnight. And uh, I had a digital magazine, thank God, for years. I just ignored it. Uh, but I had all this content, but it was amazing. I learned so much about my business. And that's what I think a lot of it, just like you're a business owner, you probably learned so much about your people, what they needed, what they liked, and yeah. how to become more efficient. And I think a lot of companies learned a lot that they didn't realize that they didn't know. Am I right or wrong? When you're oh, doing definitely. And I, I think that as an employer, you know, it um I I, I think that employees want to feel like they matter, right? They want to feel cared for, um, you know, and I think there were, there were many opportunities to, you know, to kind of show that and, you know, work with people and make sure they did have what they need. You know? Yeah. Um, so. uh, 
talk about some of the some of the did you have you over the last you know through the last two years or as we were rolling into now q2 of 2022 have you have you come up with any new techniques or anything with terrazzo uh that's new or is it you know basically you know the same kind of gig you know other than you know colors and formations uh, well, I mean, right. So terrazzo has been around for hundreds of years, right? Mm -hmm. From ancient Rome. So um, I, I sometimes joke that the last innovations in terrazzo happened in the 1920s uh, when we got electric grinding machines instead of rocks on sticks. Um, but, you know, that's not really true. We do have, uh, we continue to work um, to adapt our product to the realities of uh, construction today, fast track scheduling uh, with slabs that were, you know, we used to not install terrazzo till a slab was down about a year. Uh, now it's, oh, we're pouring the slab on Tuesday. Can you come on Thursday? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, so adapting uh, terrazzo um, and making sure it's suitable in these, um, you know, these kind of harsher environments where the slab hasn't cured out yet. Um, and continuing uh, you know, terrazzo is known because it lasts for 75 to 100 years um, and you know the greenest floor is the one you don't rip out uh, mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of has a reputation as a green product uh, well deserved you know but even to um, to lessen the environmental impact of terrazzo we continue to um, you know to continue to develop um, new formulations um, you know that we can that you know can meet the uh, needs um, of today's owners who you know really want a healthier building and are starting to pay attention to you know what goes into the construction. You know it, uh, it it's funny it, it's been around like you said since ancient Rome. You know so it's uh, it, it's one of those products that you know you know has evolved and it, it, it's amazing that listen some of those structures that, that the Romans built are still standing today. You know um, right. so it's. Uh, it, it's a very, uh, it's a very, like I said, uh, some of the ads that, that Sharon has sent me, I'm like, oh, wow, that's a really cool gig. You know, you wonder, you know, someone had a vision and there it is. So um, let's talk about the NTMA. Uh, tell us a little about that organization that you're leading there as well. So the National Terrazzo Mosaic Association uh, is the only trade association in the United States for, um, for the Terrazzo industry. Uh, it is considered the, um, the standard bearer of the terrazzo industry. Um, most most um, you know, processes have an ASTM. Terrazzo doesn't have an ASTM. They have the NTMA. Uh, so um, you know, our focus is to um, you know, is, is uh, design and technical expertise, um, you know, educating architects about the use of terrazzo, promoting the use of terrazzo uh, and ensuring um, that um, that all of our members install very high quality installations. Um, our membership is actually standards based. Um, it takes uh, for a contractor who wanted to become a new member. It actually takes usually about two years. Uh, there are job inspections, references. You know, we send uh, we send inspectors out to, to talk with people. Um, so. Um, you know, so, so you that, have, so you have, you know, you can't be anybody to get in, you know, you got to prove yourself. That's correct. Not the correct because it does last a long time and it is cast in place. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough for beginners. <laughs> how, how many members are in NTMA? Is it 150 or is it less? I, I um, yeah, there are right. about 145 yeah, contractor right. members. And then we have our um, industry um, colleagues, our suppliers for aggregates, epoxy, the metal strips, that kind of, you know, machine, grinding machines, things like that. Yeah, that the, uh, it, you know, I, before, before the pandemic, I used to walk all the shows. So I would always see the NTMA, a, NTMA booth, tongue twister there, sure. you know, multiple times, you know, during the year. And, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, but you see people and they're looking they're like, what is that thing, you know, but the, but the coolest thing the NTMA always had, you always had these like little uh, square little uh, samples on your booth. Yeah. I, I, sure. I, used to, I used to grab them because I used them as coasters on my desk and stuff, you know, so it, uh, that was my, 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 that's my thing that I remember from all this, the shows I used to walk. I was like, oh, they got another one here. I'm going to take that yep. home. 
Absolutely. So my wife's Absolutely. Like, oh, and uh, oh. no, no, trade shows are back. We're, uh, we, are, we will be at uh, AIA, um, Healthcare Design, and uh, I think Learningscapes this spring. So mm -hmm. excited to get back to that. I think, uh, you know, the people who are going back to trade shows are, are excited to be there. Oh, yeah. And like I said, there's nothing like, uh, you know, doing, you know, having that in-person in internet activities and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing how many events are going on and, uh, like I'm an event producer. I want those people to get back just like, you know, I wanted everybody, all the restaurants and all that stuff. So it's exciting sure. to see it. Uh, you know, I, I went virtual. I'm still virtual. I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to bring my event back or not. Uh, may, I might do a hybrid, uh, you know, we always do our event in January. So if there's a snowstorm in Boston or New York and Philly, I lose a bunch of attendees. So, you know, that that's the diciness. And I always like to be the first one out because uh, my show is, you know, a couple of weeks after New Year's and a lot of people will come back. God, the holidays are draining anyway. So they need a vacation anyway from all, you know, all that stuff that goes on during the holidays. And um, they get through their email and they're like, you know, I'm going to go down to David's event for, you know, a couple of days. I'm going to come back to them and I figure out where I'm going to go, you know, but it's also, I have to deal with the I, old man winter, you know, ruining my day. I was doing someplace warm, but getting those people there. So I've done virtual now for two years. I really like it. I don't have to worry about the, the you know, snowstorms, the eggs being hot. I still have that interaction because of technology. And, um, uh, but you know, people have been like, how are you going to bring it back? Are you going to bring it back? I'm like, I don't know. So I just put in my, my last issue. I said, I'm hybrid. Day two to be determined. So I'm, I'm taking a wait and see. I want to see how things go. Uh, but, you know, it, I said, the first thing I'm going to brag is my cocktail parties. That, that's probably the best thing, you know. And then we always do Boston in July. So, you know, hopefully awesome. I'll get to see you in person. And uh, we'll go down. I would normally do it down in the seaport, you know, in that, in, you know, in that neck of the woods. Great area. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, watch it all get built, you know, over the years. And yeah. uh, uh, so, but, you know, it's, it, it's good to see, you know, and I'm on LinkedIn and I'm looking at pictures. I'm seeing people that it's just that they're all happy. You know, they're all just good to see, just to see people. I did my first event in person in December, uh, my first cocktail party. And it was awesome seeing people I hadn't seen in a while. I mean, I'd seen them on Zoom and everything else but it was it was good to hug people shake hands have some people you know one person mm -hmm. had a mask on it went off in about two minutes and, yeah uh, you know and okay. uh you know and so all of that was it, it was just very very positive so you know but looking at you know all the people you know it, it, it's exciting you know because people are like oh man i'm gonna get my life back you know and we're gonna you know do these things even my wife she's like you know, I used to really like it when you were on the road a couple of days. Aren't you going to go on the road? I'm like, where would you like me to go? Everything's closed. Would you like me to go to the store and get some bananas or, you know, uh, tomato sauce? Well, what do you want me to do? You know, you know, go for a run. So uh, it, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, it was nice, you know, I mean, so, you know, I'll, I'll probably, uh, you know, start getting back out there and, uh, uh, but, uh you know, AIA, you know, I'm an AI provider. So I would walk that show. It's, it's on my calendar, you know, to go walk. And uh, I haven't been there, and, you know, well, been canceled the last Yeah, right. I've right. been around, so it's coming back. Right. So uh, it, uh, it'll be good to see, you know, uh, you know, to get out there and stuff and uh, get my walking shoes, you know, I have to dust them off, you know, and uh, so. Um, yeah, absolutely. So uh, thinking, you know, as, 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 as we go into Q2, in 2022, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, coming out and everything's opening up and you, you're leading the NTMA, 100 year organization companies, you know, you know, been around forever. You know, if you had a positive thought or phrase that you wanted would like to leave with our commercial construction coffee talk fans out there, what would it be as we move forward? I know it's a, I know it's a, mm. a, a All right. Number. Um, so uh, there's a Harry Truman quote that I really like. He said, an optimist is one who makes opportunities of his difficulties. And I think contractors are optimistic by nature. And I am, I am no exception. You know, the AGC um, survey in January said that um, contractors were optimistic in 15 out of 17 categories. And, you know, uh, I see, you know, Architectural billings index is up. I, I think, you know, I think we're coming out of it. And there is a lot of pricing pressure right now. 
obviously with inflation, um, you know, but I, I th I'm, I'm hopeful. I see a lot of work, we're bidding a lot of work and uh, you know, it seems, it seems like uh, people were, you know, really raring to go when, when we came, you know, as we come out of the pandemic. Yeah, listen, there's nothing wrong about being, listen, I, I told my, my guest yesterday, you know, optimistic. I said, listen, they're in warmups right now. We, before we got together, they're, they're in the locker room. They're getting their last pep talk. It's optimistic. We can beat this team. And I know Michigan was doing the same thing. Hey, Denver's been there forever. That They're going to beat this. There's nothing like optimism, you know, because, it, you know, it, it, you know, versus being negative. Oh, we're not going to get this. And, you know, I mean, yeah. you throw the negativity out the door. I mean, I don't have time for it, you know? And uh, so right. optimism is just a really, it, it, you know, it's addictive, you know, not only to yourself, but to your, you know, to your team in general. And, uh, you know, and as long as you give it your all, you know, winning, you know, there's nothing wrong with losing because yeah. I learned, you know, I learned from all my losses, you know, all my yep, mistakes definitely. I've learned from. So, sure. you know, but I'm still optimistic. You know, I get up every day. Hey, I know the sun's getting, it might be cloudy, but I know the sun's going to rise, you know? And, uh, yeah. you know, um, uh, you know, my son, uh, he said, oh, yo, I just got my truck. You know, gas prices are going up. I'm like, bro, listen, when I was in the 70s, I remember the gas lines, okay? You had, it was odd and even on your license plate, you know? I went through the internet bubble. I went through the 08 crash. I went through the dot-com. I, I went through all of these things, like you said, over the years. I'm giving my age away. But I just said, look, it, it, it's eventually they're, they're going to figure things out. And, you know, gas prices will, will probably come down. You know, down the road, will you have an electric vehicle? I have no idea. You might have a hydrogen vehicle, you know, who knows? Yeah. So there, there's, you know, I, there's so much stuff going every day. There's so much stuff that happens, it, you know, business, politically, per, whatever. I mean, information is moving a million miles a minute. How could you not be optimistic? It's, it's like right. the greatest time to be alive. There's all sorts of stuff that, that's going to happen, uh, you know, down the road that, you know, we don't even know. Uh, so that's the way that I look at it. I definitely look at the ha the glass half full, not not half. Absolutely. You know, and uh, until until the buzzer go off goes off, hey man, we still got a chance. You know, that's we right. kind of kind of hey, we kind of adapt. You know, so uh, I like it. So if someone wanted to uh, reach out to you and touch base about you know your firm or the NTMA, how would they connect with you? Uh, yep, yeah, I mean, um, so I can. It's just you don't have to give your email yeah. out or your, your, your phone. I'm just, you know, if so, because we're talking about Terrazzo. Some people might not. Hey, gee, I've never even used that in my project. Gee, tell how would I, how would I call this nice lady? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they can, uh, they can email. Um, there's a link on ntma.com um, and they'll find me. All right. Awesome. Awesome. If anybody wants to reach me, I'm at David C at ccr-mag.com. Uh, we're always looking at everything. I, I know I always say it, but if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you can't win. If you don't send me something, I can't look at it. I can't post it. I can't even think about getting you in the magazine. Uh, so uh, send it to us. We look at everything. Got a couple million people every month that hit our site and are consuming our content. So, you know, it can be anything. Projects, case studies, personnel, charity events. I look at all that stuff. I will find a spot for it. And I'll come back to you. Hey, I like this. I'll send it to the editorial staff. Hey, I already posted this. Here's your link. So believe me, send it to me. We'll find a place for it. So, well, Leslie, pleasure speaking with you up in Beantown and, <laughs> uh, and uh, Legal Seafood, one of my favorite spots, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, chowda. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, listen, uh, Enjoy the weekend. We really appreciate you finding the time, you know, later on a Friday afternoon, you know, to be our guest. I'm glad we, you know, got to meet. And um, I look, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll get to, uh, my event on the schedule in July and we can meet in person. And, uh, um, and that goes the same to everybody else out there. Hopefully I'll get to uh, see a lot of my, you know, buds and so forth, you know, down the road here as we, uh, you know, get back to the swing of things and, uh, you know, get back out on the road in the plane. And uh, it was funny, you know, back in December, I was a million miler with Delta. And I, I went to book my ticket. I hadn't flown in two years and I forgot my login. I was like, <laughs> wife, I'm like, I don't even remember my login. I had to look it up on my phone, you know? And, and the other day I drove down the airport. I got halfway down. I'm like, oh man, I forgot my mask. 
you know, I'm like, I don't even know if they're wearing them in there, you know? So the shuttle, I got on the shuttle and I said, hey, do you guys got a mask going? I forgot it on my desk. And they're like, oh yeah, sure. You know, we're not even using it anymore, but hey, you didn't need one on the plane for another week or two. I said, thanks. I appreciate that. So, well, with that said, Leslie, say goodbye from Boston. Goodbye from Boston. Have a wicked good day. All right. And I'm going to say goodbye from uh, the Buford Dam at Lake Lanier, about 30 miles or so north of downtown Atlanta. And uh, everybody, enjoy the weekend. Easter's coming down the road in a couple weeks. Happy Easter. Have a great Q2 and the rest of the year. And uh, listen, you know, it, it, it just stay optimistic, just like Leslie said. Okay. Optimism is the way to go. And I'm right there Absolutely. with you. And uh, with that said, uh, we're going to sign up and we hope to see you next time on another episode of Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. And last but not least, go Pios! Beat Minnesota State tomorrow. Hopefully bring the trophy home. Get it done, boys. We're hoping for you. Another one. All right, Leslie. Thank you so much for being our guest. I look forward to meeting you in person, all right? Sounds good. All right. Bye -bye. See you later.